In Decisions, the workflow designer is the primary designer. Everything needs a workflow and is workflow-based. If a workflow is the, back, is the backbone, then rules are the brain. Rules are the heart of automation. And automation implies removing human interaction. In order to do so, you need decision-making capability. So we need to be able to make decisions without humans, which is where rules come in. We have a very robust rules engine that evaluates input data to determine whether that data matched the criteria that you specify. If you're wondering why you would use a rule or what the benefit of using a rule of decisions is, the answer is simple. They give you the flexibility to automate business decisions. They make it easy to change and maintain business logic as your business continues to grow and evolve, and you can do it with no code. These conditions are set up by you in the rule designer, which is what we're going to review in our own designer when we can custom script rules to do and, if, or, then statements. You build the rule and whatever true or false means, which means you get to decide the path of the flow that executes based on your criteria. Our rules are used to validate or output data. So for example, a dentist office wants to run a check against their list of patients. And if a patient is in between the ages of 18 and 22 and still have their wisdom teeth according to their records, then we probably want to send them an email about the benefits of getting their wisdom teeth out early. So there are all sorts of ways that you can use a rule to check data and also be able to trigger an event based on the rules results. There are seven types of rules in decisions, but they all have the same concept, which is to validate or output data. We won't be covering all of them in depth during this training, but I'll give a brief overview of what each type is, and you can always check our documentation for more information on any of these. Statement rules are a phrase-like way of reading a rule, like a sentence. If this happens, then another thing happens. Statement rules are the most flexible type of rule, which is why you'll see them used in the form designer as visibility, validation, and outcome rules. Truth tables are rules that compare the possible combinations of multiple inputs, allowing the user to arrive at different outcomes depending on specific combination. Sequential rules are limited flow designer where you specify the order in which the rules are run based on how the previous rules execute. Expression rules more focus on algorithms. They allow you to define a function with variables that can be dynamically configured as a step in the workflow. Matrix, matrix rules are our visual. So it allows you to intersect two different rules. On the left is one statement rule and on the top is another. And based on the conditions of each rule, they will intersect and return an outcome. Rule sets gives you the ability to run a batch of rules together as one flow step or as one service call. It takes a common input and returns a list of values from the outcome of each rule, runs rules faster uh, than using each individual rule sequentially in a flow. Rule chains are a flow behavior that runs rules in a certain pattern configured in a new designer to create a flow that looks like what you see on the screen. They're also compliant to decision notation modeling or DMN. Interceptor rules catch and save invalid inputs in the workflow process. The saved data can then be reviewed and fixed manually or automatically. So how do we run a rule? We have th three different ways that we can use. We can insert a rule into our workflow. If it's a rule that outputs true or false, when depending on that output, our flow can then take a different path and contain different logic. We can have rules run at certain time intervals using what's called a scheduled job to run hourly, weekly, or even on a certain day. And we can also integrate rules via API so that they can just run as a background process and send results somewhere else. I briefly mentioned that rules can return a true or false, but there are actually three types of results to note. We can have just the true or false, which is a logical output. We can return a specific piece of data based on how the rule evaluates. For example, we could output an error message that we specify if our rule evaluated false so that we could show a helpful piece of data if somebody is receiving the rule results from an API. Or we can have a rule trigger an action after it evaluates data, similar to the dentist example earlier, where we would send an email based on the patient criteria. To configure rules, no matter what the type, you will have to do three things. You will need the inputs. So what data do we have? What are we working with? You need the conditions or the logic of the rule. How or why is the data being evaluated? And the outputs. What do we want to happen based on how this rule is evaluating? Now that we have an idea of what rules are and how they work, let's create an example of our most used rule together, a statement rule. It's important to visualize how we want to evaluate our data since how our rule works will rely on how we are configuring it. In this example, we're gonna create an auto approval rule for a car loan. For our inputs, we'll take in an age as an integer, 
a previous accident as a Boolean or a logical response, and a purchase price as a decimal number. Next is our conditions. We want our rule to auto approve the applicant if they are over the age of 21, they have never had a previous accident, and the purchase price is over $20,000, or the applicant is over the age of 30 and has not had a previous accident. Our outputs will just be returning a simple true or false, and our, true, and our rule designer will look something like this when we're done. We're going to switch to our studio designer decisions to create this together. Here, we're in our rule designer in decisions. Even though we're looking at a blank rule, if we work from top to bottom of the designer, we can construct everything that we need to make a functioning rule. First, we need to define our inputs, which are gonna be the age as an integer, we're gonna have the previous accident as a Boolean or a logical response, and the purchase price as a decimal. Now that we have our inputs defined, now we'll define our conditions. We said that we want our rule to auto approve uh, or return true if the applicant is over the age of 21, they've never had a previous accident, and the purchase price is over $20,000, or the applicant is over the age of 30 and has not had a previous accident. Whatever conditions are in our brackets are, what's, are what must be met for our auto approval to return true, and we can organize this to meet our either or format that we established earlier. From here, we can simply add our conditions as we need them, starting with our either bracket using this add button and add condition. The rest from here is constructing the conditions just like we would a sentence. Now we add our conditions for the OR bracket. Now, this looks pretty good. Uh, from here, our rule is complete. We have our inputs. We have our either OR conditions here and we have our predefined results giving us a true or false uh, if-then statement. Now we can test this using unit tests. Uh, we can define our fields here, have it meet our criteria if we want to, the rule to return true or false based on what, whatever we've defined. And we can see that our rule here uh, returns us false because our conditions aren't met on either, on the either branch or the or branch of our rule. Now we can create another test that'll give us the true if we just meet one of these conditions. Here, now, even though the first branch of our either part wasn't met, because the conditions of our or part were met, the rule returns true. Now that the rules being is ready to be added into a workflow, that concludes our intro to rules.